Well, thank you, Councillor Vashur. And can I also acknowledge my state parliamentary uh, colleagues? Uh, can I also uh, acknowledge uh, federal MPs uh, who are with us and joining us? Can I also acknowledge federal candidates uh, coming up uh, at the coming uh, state election? Uh, I'm very thankful for today's opportunity. Uh, thank you uh, to the Lord Mayor for organising this event today. Thank you for your early recognition of the benefits, not just of trams throughout uh, the CBD here in Adelaide, but the benefits that it can bring to broader communities. And so on that basis, can I thank all of uh, the mayors from around Adelaide who have come along here today, uh, not just for your attendance, but also bringing your council officers, your council staff, uh, and from people within your communities to come along here today. This is, I think, a uh, a unique and clear demonstration of the broad-based support that we have for pursuing this form of infrastructure development into the future. I can also acknowledge some of the uh, industry association representatives uh, and opinion leaders throughout the Adelaide uh, community. Uh, we have the Property Council, the Local Government Association and the Urban Development Institute of Australia here today, amongst others. I think it's terrific that you're lending your voice and your support uh, to these efforts uh, for Adelaide's future. I firmly believe that today is an extraordinary opportunity for the future of Adelaide. This is a unique opportunity for local government to come together and join with the state government and cement Adelaide's reputation, as the Lord Mayor said, uh, cement Adelaide's reputation as one of the world's most livable cities. And today's opportunity is couched in the remarkable capacity that better transport infrastructure has to provide that sort of outcome to a metropolitan area. And transport infrastructure like trams have delivered these sorts of benefits, not just to the city of Adelaide, but as we're about to hear, also other capital cities around Australia, but also around the nation. If we succeed in our efforts today of joining together and collaborating in our efforts to bring this infrastructure further into our communities throughout metropolitan Adelaide, we will be delivering not just a step change in how we move around our community, but I'm sure that when we look back collectively, whether it's in 10 or 15 years' time, we can all recognise how the fabric of our communities has been radically transformed and transformed for the better through delivering these sorts of infrastructure benefits into our communities. We know that today's opportunity to talk about how we can make our community more livable, more economically productive, uh, more uh, socially coherent and productive and, uh, and more culturally expressive and enjoyable. All of these uh, outcomes and attributes from communities can be delivered through this unique form of transport infrastructure. We know today that these are the benefits that trams can bring to our communities. I say we know this, we know this now. Ten years ago, we weren't having this conversation. Ten years ago, when we first mooted plans to bring trams further into the CBD of Adelaide, we were met roundly with howls of derision and of steadfast opposition from just about every quarter, from people who were living in the city, from people who were working in the city, for people who were conducting business in the city, for people whose responsibility it was to administer the city from uh, the then uh, Adelaide City Council. It was a long, very heated and protracted debate about why we would bother spending uh, scarce taxpayer funds on this sort of endeavour. And it was only after a sustained uh, engagement and prolonged campaign by the then state government that we were just able to tip the balance of the then Adelaide City Council in favour of supporting this infrastructure coming through, uh, the f coming further through the city of Adelaide. I'm very pleased to say that 10 years on, we are having the complete opposite conversation. We've got not only an Adelaide City Council, which is uh, 
firmly a strong believer in the benefits of this infrastructure, uh, but as we should all recognise today, is led by a Lord Mayor who is expressing not just uh, public support, but public leadership in trying to bring us together uh, so that we can continue these tram extensions. As a result, we've seen a surge in public transport patronage, particularly along the tram line, from what we've delivered over the past 10 years. We're alleviating pressure on our roads, particularly adjacent to that tram corridor all the way from Glenelg. And we've seen a remarkable amount of development in the CBD all the way along uh, that corridor, whether it's in the west end of the city, around what uh, the University of South Australia in particular is doing, uh, as well as the other health and medical research uh, institute developments, but also along King William Street and King William Road, uh, heading towards South Terrace. Um, these are not solely developments built on the back of the improvement in tram infrastructure and tram services, but we know that the benefit of uh, that improved infrastructure has certainly made those marginal investment decisions much easier for people who are investing in these developments. We know in the city that the retail and the other commercial benefits have continued uh, to grow strongly uh, in recent years. And so over the past three years, the state government has led a process where we've tried to set out what we believe uh, the next 30 years of transport projects that need to be delivered across the whole state, across South Australia, for the benefit of our community. And one part of that plan, that 30-year plan, uh, that we call a integrated transport and land use plan, has been what we call the Adelink network, extending Adelaide's trams further throughout the metropolitan area uh, and throughout the community. Uh, and we've identified that, yes, there are opportunities in the CBD, whether it's a city tram loop, but there are also opportunities out to our communities. Uh, we've spoken about Eastlink heading out towards Kent Town and Norwood. Uh, we've spoken about trams uh, heading out towards uh, O'Connell Street into North Adelaide and further along Prospect Road uh, into Prospect. Uh, also along Henley Beach Road, out through Myland and Torrensville, and hopefully eventually along Airport Road uh, out to the airport. Also into those key areas of Unley and Mitcham. And of course, uh, to those areas close to my heart in the western suburbs, uh, to Henley Beach, to West Lakes, to Semaphore and to Port Adelaide. These are the options and the opportunities which we know we have before us. And I'm very pleased uh, to have councils representing all of those areas uh, along here today. Imagining these opportunities in that transport and land use plan is important, but as its name suggests, it's the integration of those two efforts, getting the transport infrastructure right, but also getting the land use planning, the urban development outcomes and opportunities right at the same time, and delivering those in conjunction is what sits behind that plan. And that really speaks to the opportunity of tram infrastructure and tram extensions into the future. And so that's why uh, several weeks ago the Premier and I announced $4 million that the State Government would be funding for very detailed uh, tram studies across each of those areas which I've just spoken about, whether it's heading uh, north or south or east or west or heading out into the northwestern suburbs. This planning study is not just about working out w which road uh, or which route these trams should take, although that's certainly important. It's about making sure that we go to all of the effort necessary to fully understand and then capture the benefits that these trams can bring throughout suburban Adelaide. Making sure, for example, that we're placing the tram stops in the right place, that they will be integrated into the right, uh, uh, into the right um, uh, retail and commercial precincts of those communities, making sure uh, that those facilities are integrated into uh, the urban form, that they can unlock the greatest amount of urban development uh, opportunity possible for the future. You can't achieve those sorts of benefits and, and, and you can't achieve those sorts of outcomes unless you go through that detailed planning process. And that's why uh, this week I've also written uh, to all of those mayors in those areas and I've asked them and I've asked their administrations to sit around the table with the state government 
as we go through that planning study to make sure that we're identifying all of the opportunities uh, in those council areas. That we've got council buy-in from the beginning, that we're giving them the opportunity to plan with us how these trams can benefit and transform their communities. We certainly in government have some information and potentially some of the answers about how these tram projects should look. But we know that many more of the answers lie with local government. And we know that much of the relevant data and information sits with local government. And that's why it's imperative that both the Premier and I firmly want to see each of your councils represented uh, sitting alongside the state government in that planning study and those efforts. Before I want to finish, I want to talk a little further about something that the Lord Mayor raised. And that's uh, the fact that we are coming into a federal election period. I'm very, very pleased to say that finally we have a coalition government at any level that supports public transport investment and that supports trams in particular. <clears throat> that is an important step change that we've had from the Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull. Of course, you would expect me to say that there has always been a strong commitment from the Labor side of politics uh, for public transport spending and investment and particularly for this sort of infrastructure. But I'm very, very happy now that this is a legitimate uh, area of debate for a federal election campaign between two parties uh, seeking to make good their credentials in this area. And I think it's very timely that we've got governments across metropolitan Adelaide now who are all talking about this, all making this a priority, uh, and will certainly be making those views known uh, to federal candidates and to the two major political parties. But we should also be upfront by saying there's no free ride with this. Uh, we've certainly been given a clear indication from the federal government that they don't expect it will only be state government or state and federal government who will be funding these infrastructure improvements in the future. They have made it absolutely clear that they want uh, opportunities explored uh, to capture some of the benefits that communities will experience from this infrastructure and have those benefits captured in a way that they can contribute to the delivery of these uh, tram extension projects. That is an incredibly important area uh, for us to consider, not just today, but on an ongoing basis as we go through this planning study work. And I'm very pleased that we've got uh, some people who can talk to us today in more detail about what some of those options are. But it's critical now that all of us are prepared uh, to put our shoulders to the wheel, not just in getting the plans right, but also in being prepared to contribute to bringing these projects out into, into our communities. I am very, very reticent to jump to a solution or indeed really even canvas one or two solutions in favour of another. Uh, understandably, uh, I think communities are very sensitive about the prospect of a value capture regime which may impact what their contribution towards this sort of infrastructure may be. And if we don't get our considerations right and if we don't get our discussions right with the community, we can be at grave risk of losing the groundswell of community support that we currently have to pursue these plans for the benefit of our areas. So I'm very glad that, uh, Martin, not only have you convened us all here today, but you've made sure that we've got access to the relevant expertise about how to tackle that particular problem. But in closing, whether it's that problem or whether it's picking the best route or making sure that we've got the right infrastructure at each particular tram stop, or we know how we would like to deliver these uh, extension projects uh, in stages. These are all of the issues, these are all the problems that I look forward uh, to sitting down with you all and tackling jointly in the coming months. And I'm very confident that we will be looking back in 10 or 15 years, saying that today was the day that we all got together and jointly committed uh, to transforming our communities for the better, bringing them better public transport options and in particular this type of uh, transport infrastructure uh, which will change the fabric of our communities for the good. I wish you all the best for your uh, considerations and discussions today and I look forward to working with you all in the future. Thank you. Thank you.